Are you willing to allow God to initiate changes to your life? Welcome to Pastor's Point, I'm Jamie Schmitz. Today's program addresses this question as Pastor Jerry Lacey from Freedom Christian Fellowship in Adrian, Michigan shares his message entitled, Holy Spirit Imparted Change. Greetings. I want to talk to you today about change, about how the Holy Spirit uses the Word of God to bring change into our lives. In Amos chapter 3, it tells us in verse 3, can two walk together unless they are agreed? Well, if you're going to be successful in life, in Christian life, in business life, or any other kind of life, you're going to have to be in agreement with God. God's Word gives us the ability to understand what success truly is. It's not just a pocket full of money. God wants to change us from the inside out so that we can be profitable to the world. We're here to be witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we need the Word of God. The Holy Spirit uses the Word of God to impart change to our lives. And I want you to change. I want you to be different. I want you to be better. I want you to know more, grow more. I want you to see more. I want God's revelation knowledge to come into your life. It comes by changing you from the inside out. The Bible tells us that Jesus said in, in John chapter 15, verses, I don't even know the verses, but it's in John, John chapter 15, He wants us to bear fruit, more fruit, much fruit, and fruit that remains. That means there's a process, and I'll talk about that, that a little bit more. But He wants us to grow up and change, be different. Now, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 21, and I want to read out of the Amplified Bible. It says, My son, reverently fear the Lord and the king, and do not associate with those who are given to change. Now, <laughs> that means literally, and this is what the Amplified Bible says, of allegiance or are revolutionary. What it's indicating is that God's not pleased with us changing for the wrong reasons. He wants us to change for the right reasons. And I believe the Holy Spirit takes the Word of God and applies it to our life so we can be a different people. Can I have an amen out there from somebody? Now, but the Bible is a book of change. It declares to us change. It helps us to change. It imparts the keys to change. It provides hope for change. And it proves that people can change. Hallelujah. I'm glad people can change because if they couldn't change, we'd all be in trouble. Amen. Our children wouldn't change and our kids wouldn't change and our parents wouldn't change and our husbands and wife wouldn't change. We need change. We need to grow. The Word of God gives us examples of people who have changed. People can change. That's my point. <laughs> I'm going to keep making that point. People can change. You can change. I said you can change. Not that you want everybody around you to change, but you need to change so that other people can change. Some, and some folks that are messed up around you need to change to help you too. So the Apostle Paul, before he became uh, the Apostle Paul, he was Saul, he needed a dramatic change in his life. He needed to become a different person. On the road to Damascus, he had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And as a result of that, he was a changed man. I don't know about you, but I got saved in 1975, June 16th, 5 o'clock in the morning. I got saved, received Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And I'm telling you, I was changed instantaneously. God did something in my life. And I'm telling you, when you are a new creature in Christ, you will change. Can I have a good amen out there? You start thinking about the, that kind of change, dramatic change, that happens in people's lives, you, you begin to get hope. I can change. Something can happen to me. Something can change around me. People can change around me. That's the, pr the problem is not only can people change, the problem is that some people don't want to change. They don't want to be different. Well, <laughs> you need to start thinking outside the box and get a hold of the Word of God so you can change and be a different person. Amen. See, the Word of God gives us hope. Hope for people around us who need change. We, wa we want them to change. We need them to change sometimes. We wonder why, if they're ever going to change, but the Word of God gives us hope that even if Saul could change, that means we can change, you can change, anybody. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, when God got a hold of me, I had to change. <laughs> 
I was a mess. I was messed up. I came from a generation where their drugs were going on for free lifestyle. Something had to get a hold of me. I was 25 years old. I was a black belt in karate. I was mean. I was uh, riotous. I was doing all this kind of stuff. And I'm telling you, God got a hold of me. And when he did, he changed me from the inside out. Change is what you need. I'm telling you, change is what, listen, if God could change Peter, if God could change Saul, I'm going to tell you, God can change you. He can change your husband. He can change your wife. He can change your kids. He can change your boss. He can change anything about your life. You've got to be willing and able to do that change <laughs> and to receive that change. Amen. But we've got to understand that change does not come like a seven step program, four steps to this and three steps to that. No, it doesn't come that way. It's progressive. God wants to change you from the inside out. Now, when you make a salvation commitment, that change is instantaneous. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. I'll tell they, share that with you later. Change comes as we grow in God. And you cannot grow in God if you don't read the Word of God. The Word of God is the change agents. That's what the Holy Spirit uses to bring us to a new place, to change us from within. And if, if you get the Word inside of you, you'll change. Now, I, I say this often to people, but we've got to realize that just studying the Scriptures sometimes causes people trouble. They sit down, they try to study the Word of God to get some information from God, and they don't understand it, so they close the Bible because they don't understand it. But I, I've been on a, this crusade to get people to just read the Word of God. If you'll read the Word of God, if you'll see what the Word of God says, that Word will sink down inside you. And then later, the Holy Spirit can use that to bring an impartation of change to your life. Just read the Word. So, well, Brother Lacey, all I do is get, uh, you know, I read the chapter and I forgot what I read after I read it. That's the trick of the enemy. God wants you to grow up. So read the Word. It's the only agent that's going to get you to change in a proper way. So this, I want you to understand that Jesus is not some magus, magic hocus pocus uh, <laughs> Fix all, fix all situation. We've got too many Christians that are grabbing their Bibles and are kind of rubbing it on top three or four times and hoping genie Jesus jumps out to grant them three wishes. That's not how God works. He works with the Word, and the Word has to get inside you. The trouble has been over the years that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They are not seeing what God's Word says. They don't know it, so they can't do it. They can't respond to what God says. One time God revealed to me in that passage of Scripture in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. In the Strong's exhaustive uh, concordance, it gives some definition of words, and I was reading that, and, and I discovered some things, that my people can actually be translated into my troops. And it says, are destroyed for lack of knowledge, it actually could read out, my troops stand silent because they do not know what to say. Jesus combated and defeated the enemy because he said, it is written. He couldn't say that unless he knew that it was. A lot of Christians do not know what the Bible says, so they can't say anything in defense of what the enemy is saying to them. It is time for us to stop <laughs> trying to believe that Jesus is a genie and he's just going to take care of our temporary problems all the time. We need to grow up, change from inside. The word change, and I'll say this again later too, that change is repentance. It's changing what we've been doing, turning around and going the opposite direction. I was raised Baptist, and uh, no, no offense to any Baptist, because if it wasn't for the Baptist, nobody would be saved practically. But uh, the reality is I was saved as a Baptist, and uh, I, I discovered some things. There was a lot of trouble in the house because people didn't know what to do with what they had. And I want God's people to know what to do with what they have. They've got something inside. Christ in us, the hope of glory. So he wants us to grow up and change, repent of our sin, repent of our problems, repent. Just turn around and go the opposite direction. Find out what God says about a situation, any given situation. Get the word on it, put the word on it, and change. Go the opposite direction. It's not that I have to run to the altar, and this is what we always used to do, is run to the altar every week and hope that God will forgive me again. 
No, the grace of God covers that. God's grace on our life fixes that. What we need to do after we're saved is make quality decisions that I am going to change. I am not going to be the same. I am going to be a different person. I'm going to stop doing that thing that's hurting me and start doing what God wants me to do. That's change. That's repentance. That's doing what God wants us to do. And that's, that's why it's so hard for many Christians. They want it now. <laughs> We've got a a McDonald's attitude, you know, drive up the window, get it and bang them out of here. The reality is it doesn't happen that way. God wants us to change from the inside out slowly and progressively. God has a way for us to do these things. Now, listen to me. Without the Word of God, life can appear hopeless at times. You need the assurance that you can change and the people around you can change. And that's why the Bible is so important. And that, that's why it's so hard to get God's people to read the Word of God. The devil knows that these things are important. And so if he can stop us from doing anything, he'll let us go to church and, you know, he'll let us sing praises and we'll turn on the radio and we listen to songs and we get blessed and, you know, everything's cool and I had a good time at church this week and we watched the drama. But listen to me, the key to change in your life is that the Holy Spirit takes the Word of God to impart change. And if without the Word of God, he cannot impart change into our lives. We want that, but I say this often to our fellowship, the Bible's not a verse, it's a book. It is a whole complete book, and we're taking verses out of the Scriptures to change our lives, and it doesn't happen that way. We've got to put the book together. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. The whole book is a revelation of how we can be servants of the Most High God. We can be what God wants us to be, but we've got to be determined to repent, change, turn around, go the opposite direction, so we can hear and see what God wants us to do and be. Now, let me tell you that your circumstances can change. That's right. I know a lot of people going through a lot of stuff right now, a lot of change going on in this country, and a lot of change going on around this world. But I'm telling you, God can change you right where you're at. He can change your circumstances. I know you may be going through some very bad things right now. I've talked to a lot of people, and a lot of folks are going through some strange situations right now. But I've got news for you. God can change you. God can rearrange you. God can fix you. God can do in you what no one else can do. But it comes from the Word. Now, I'm talking to mostly Christians. I know that you're hearing this, but you've got to apply it to your life to have it change your life. If you don't apply the Word to your life, change will not come. And you'll be stuck doing the same old thing you've been doing for the last 30, 40 years, 10 or 5 years, whatever the case may be. And if you're doing that, there's a definition of that. If you keep doing the same thing with no results, that means that's a definition of stupid. Sorry. (laughs) That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. And you need to change what's going on in your life. How can you do that? With the Word of God. He will change your circumstance. Yeah, but Brother Lacey, you just don't understand the problems that I'm facing. Well, Joseph in the Old Testament, the book of Genesis, he faced humongous problems. He was thrown in prison. He was he was sold by his own brothers, called dead, and, and he was sold into a, another area. And then another one blamed him for raping his wife, and then he's put in prison. On and on it went until finally God let him loose, and all those things took place in his life to become the second in control of Egypt. Now, that's amazing. His circumstances changed because he didn't get involved in his circumstances. He kept Focus on his dreams, on his goals. And listen to me, each step you take toward your goal will give you faith to arise inside. you got to take a step. you got to move. You can't make it happen if you don't move out. Change comes to those who are motivated to change. Someone's anger put Joseph in prison. Someone's lies put Joseph in prison. Someone's envy and jealousy put Joseph in prison. Someone's lies are hurting you. Someone's uh, problems has caused you problems. But listen to me. God took Joseph from the pit to the palace. And all you have to know is that God wants you delivered and set free. He'll change your circumstances. I am guarantee you, it's in the Word of God. The Holy Spirit uses the Word of God to bring change to your life. Number two, He'll change your finances. Are you listening to me? He will change your finances. The Bible tells us in Luke, or I'm sorry, 1 Kings chapter 17. I won't read all that scripture, but uh, it's in there about the women of Zarephath 
who uh, was getting ready to die. Her son was emaciated. She was about to die. They're about to eat their last meal. And a man of God comes around and tells her. It's a short story, paraphrased here. Short story. Uh, he, he came around and he told her to cook, her, cook him a cake and fix him up a meal. And she's about to die and she did it. She took care of him. And as a result, God provided for her. Listen to me. I'm telling you, when a man of God, a woman of God gets involved in your life, he can change your situation financially in, in every realm. That change can come. Listen to me. When you hear a man of God give you a word. Now, listen, I'm, I'm not patting me on the back. I know I'm a man of God. I know God's on my side. I know he's inside of me. Christ in me, the hope of glory. I've, I've got an assurance of my salvation. I'm bringing you a word today, trying to help you and set you free. And if you'll listen to what God's saying right now, that'll change your destiny. It'll change and rearrange your priorities so you are focused on serving the purpose of God. Why? Because if you don't change, somebody else is going to change around you and you'll adapt to that situation. You do not want to do that. <laughs> you want to do what God wants you to do and change according to Him. See, that's why the Word of God is so important. That's why, you know, this widow and her child were starving to death and, and they were looking at their last meal. But the man of God shows up and the favor of God begins to take place in their lives. Because a man of God showed up, gave them the word of God, they did what was supposed to be done. They chose, they made a decision to go that direction. And when they made the decision, their circumstances changed. Their finances, not literally, not, not greenbacks, but they, they began to have food in their house. The oil did not deplete. The meal did not deplete. They had everything they needed to do everything they had to do. God blessed them. Well, listen, church, a man of God has just stepped into your life. Hey, man, I'm here to help you. I'm here to change something in your life. And he's telling you to change can happen and faith will arise inside your life. The word of God from a man of God or a woman of God can correct your focus. And that's what I want to tell you. God wants to change what you see in front of you. God wants to rearrange what's inside of you. Another one is that God can change your physical condition. I'm going to tell you this straight up, that the church, uh, like James, the book of James, he says, is there any sick among you? He wouldn't do that nowadays. He'd say, how many sick are among you? Because it's so bad, sickness and disease, even in the church. And I want to tell you, God can change that situation. James tells us how to do it. Call the elders. Tell them to anoint you with oil. Believe God. They'll help you believe God and get you out of that mess. I believe God can change our physical condition. He can change situations that are in our life. Now, I don't know all the problems. I don't know all the situations. I have not got all the answers, but I'm telling you, God can change some things in your life. Matthew chapter 9, verse 20 and through 22 says, And suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made whole or well. But Jesus turned around and, and uh, when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter, your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. Listen to me. See, his un, her unrelenting desire to get something for Jesus because she had heard that he was the healer. That unrelenting desire to get something from him caused her to get up in her weakness, in her sickness, and to disobey even what the, the law had commanded her to do. And because she did that, crawled out, got a hold of the hem of his garment, he, she was healed. Power, virtue flowed through Jesus into her body. God can, and Jesus is the word. The word of God can change your situation. But she was unrelenting. Listen, don't give up because you pray one time. Don't stop believing God because you prayed once, because you went to the church, because somebody laid hands on you one time. Listen, I've, I've laid hands on people till they're bald. I've put more oil on people that look like they're ready for the deep fryer. I'm telling you, I don't care how many times you go to the altar. I don't care how many times. Keep going because God has something for you. Don't give up. Let faith arise. Receive what God's got for you and be changed. God can do it. He will do it. I'm telling you, He can. That change came. It happens. And, I, and when you do get changed, you want it more. You want more to happen. You want more to go on in your life. And you also, your life can change. <laughs> I told you my testimony a little bit already. 1975, June 16th, night at 5 o'clock in the morning. It's coming up to my birthday real soon. <laughs> I got saved. I was a new creature in Christ Jesus. This is what the Word of God says. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. 
creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. I'm telling you, if you'll bow your knee to Jesus Christ, get into the Word of God, you'll never be the same. You will never, ever be the same. Understand that. And then you also, your sinful nature can be changed. Uh, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We've all in that mess. We've all, that's all happened to us. The Word of God births conviction. It births repentance and it births transformation. If you will allow the Spirit of God to get inside of you by the Word of God, don't be just looking for a feeling. The problem is nowadays is we got a lot of Christians that are chasing the miraculous instead of just picking up the Word of God and there is the miracle. It's right there in your hands. God is speaking to us. Listen, the Bible is not something He's hiding from us. He's hiding it for us. It's a re he wants to uncover revelation knowledge. He wants to uncover that word to us. And if we'll seek it, we'll desire God's word. We become unrelenting in our search for what God wants us to have. I'm telling you, change will come. Your circumstance will change. Your pe people around you will change. It'll all change. Why? Because it births that inside you. Romans 12, 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That is the Word of God working inside of you to get you to become a different person. Now also, he will, the Word of God will change your view of authority. Nobody likes to talk about this because when we start talking about authority, everybody gets nervous. You know, watch out for them pastors. Watch out for them preachers. They start demanding things. Well, I'm telling you, God is not, he's, that's not the way God operates. I can't, I'm not the Lord of the flock. Jesus is Lord. But I'm telling you, there is a chain of command. It's, a, it's not the pyramid where somebody stands at the top and everybody else is down here. I believe it's an inverted pyramid. The higher you go with God, the lower you go. And it's, it's kind of like this. The, the authority in God's house is a straight line. We're all saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. But in this straight line, there is a hierarchy amongst equals. God has appointed some to be leadership, to help the church of Christ. But we are such a nation right now where we're actually bound up by the fact that I want to be my own self and we don't want to submit. Well, submission is a part of God's Word. Now, I could read several scriptures because I got them right here. Several scriptures, but I want to read just one or two to you. In Hebrews chapter 13, it says this in verse 7. Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. Romans 13, 70. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls. You've got to understand this, folks. Watch out for your souls as those who must give an account. That's amazing. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. So God wants to change you, but He'll use preachers. He'll use teachers. He'll use individuals that'll come into your life, but you've got to come in and submit. Listen, if you're floating from one church to another, I'm about to talk to you straight now, listen. <laughs> if you're floating from one place to another, if you're rootless, you're fruitless. If you, you better find out where you belong and get your place so that you can get the man or woman of God to speak into your life so you can grow up in the things of God. Read the Word of God. The Holy Spirit will use those avenues to help you change from within. The Word of God changes your view on your children. Man, I tell you what, these bratty kids. No, no, listen. <laughs> it's not these bratty kids or these rebellious kids. Listen, did you know that your children are a blessing of the Lord? They are actually your inheritance. That's what God's Word says. See, and if you'll treat them like that, I'm telling you, he'll change your children. He'll rearrange their priorities. Say, yeah, but you don't live with them. <laughs> I know I don't. Some kids I don't want to live with. But the reality is I had my due. I had three kids and I had to raise them up even through their teenage years. And they did do some screwy things, but we still believe God. Now they're all serving the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to keep your frame of mind. God will change them because of the way you treat them. Behold, the Bible tells us in, in Psalm 127, verse 3, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. Whew, the fruit of the womb is a reward. So don't talk bad about your children. He'll change you so you can change them. Change what you're saying about your children. The Word of God changes your viewpoint about your place of work, where you're at working right now. Just listen to me. You cannot go to work and curse <laughs> deny, do all these kind of things about your boss and where you work and you hate going to work and you don't like. Listen, work is a blessing from God. It's what God gave you to prosper. He gave you that job. So do the best you can. Come into work early. Leave late. Do the best you can. Be a worker. God blessed us with work so we could prosper. 
so we can fulfill the kingdom's purposes. And we got people now that are quitting jobs and they don't need to be quitting jobs so they can depend on the, on the government for assistance. But I'm telling you, God says work is a blessing. And we got a lot of people that are not getting the blessing because they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. The Word of God will change your focus. I mentioned this earlier. But the Word of God will change your focus. Please listen. Your focus affects your faith. And Miles Monroe said this one time. He said, focus decides your feelings. We're constantly moved by our feelings, but God doesn't want us to be moved by our feelings. And lastly, the Bible shows us many examples of those who did not or were unwilling to submit to change. Jezebel didn't submit to change, and God removed her. Ahab refused to change, and he died in his sins. The cry of Jesus for Israel was that they would change. Listen to me. Remember, the Holy Spirit uses the Word of God as an instrument to change your life. It begins with repentance. Repentance is where you change on the inside, your mind. It's a thing that you've got to do up here. Change your mind and you'll change your circumstances. Believe God and the Holy Spirit will use the Word of God to be a blessing to you. Grace and peace. Thank you for watching Pastor's Point today and I trust it was a blessing to you. I want to let you know that you can connect with the church featured on today's show through the following contact information and learn more about their ministry or ask them any questions you may have about the message presented on today's show. You can also send us online feedback by visiting wlmb.com forward slash pastors point. While at our website, you may also request a DVD of today's show and find a schedule of pastors and topics for this season's episodes. Also, the ministry of Pastors Point is only made possible with the generous support of our viewers. If you would consider making a financial gift to WLMB today to help keep this program coming into your home and the homes of viewers all across Northwest Ohio and Southeastern Michigan, it would be greatly appreciated. We'd love to hear feedback about how Pastors Point is a blessing to you. And when you give your gift today, be sure to include a note about how WLMB's Pastors Point program has been a blessing to you and your family. We are always so grateful for your prayers and financial support that keep Pastors Point on the air month after month. God bless you. And be sure to tune in next time when another local pastor will share an excellent message from God's Word right here on Pastors Point. Thank you.